Okay, so in this video, I'm going to uh, work out the solution to the example problem related to rocket propulsion that is uh, in the most uh, in lecture 18 uh, for aerospace propulsion in the, in the lecture 18 slides. Or aerospace fundamentals, I apologize. Okay, so here's the given information in the problem. Um, we have a rocket which uses a fuel that has a combustor chamber temperature and pressure of uh, P. Pen's not working, of course. Let's take a second and get that working. There we go. So the combustion chamber pressure is 1. 0 0.00 megapascals or 1 million pascals and the combustion chamber temperature is 2000 Kelvin. The rocket motor, so this is in the combustion chamber and then we've got a converging diverging nozzle and the converging diverging, diverging nozzle has a throat area a star of 0 0.5 meters squared. We'll assume here that the exit pressure equals the atmospheric pressure and that that is 0 0.00 times 10 to the 5 PA. So the questions are first for us to determine the nozzle, the nozzle exit Mach number. given that the gas properties are gamma equals 1.3 and R is 500 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So to do this, what we need to look at is, well, we know the, um, there's a few, few ways we can go about doing it. So, First, we're going to sort of clearly list our assumptions. So the first assumption we need to make is that the flow is isentropic. All right, and that's important because it allows us to um, use the isentropic relationship um, essentially because the, the stagnation pressure is the same everywhere and the stagnation pressure is equal to the pressure in the combustion chamber just like the stagnation temperature is equal to the temperature in the combustion chamber. So to do this um, what do we know? Well we know the combustion chamber pressure and we know the exit pressure so we can say that PE over PC and this comes directly from from lecture 17 this is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 me squared to the gamma over gamma minus one. We're going to have to rearrange this to solve for me. So if we start by doing that, we can basically get that uh, one plus gamma minus one over two me squared to the power of gamma over gamma minus one. That's equal PC over PE. And so 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 me squared is PC over PE, right? If this was, say, squared, we would take the square root to get rid of it. So we're going to take 1 over this exponent. So this is gamma minus 1 over gamma. Now already we've got something that's looking a lot friendlier to solve. I will just copy this equation so that we can easily have it start at the top of the next page. And we'll continue to solve gamma minus one over two me squared is PC over PE to the gamma minus one over gamma minus one. And so me squared is PC over PE to the gamma minus one over gamma minus one. 
all times 2 over gamma minus 1. So at the end of the day, me is the square root of PC over PE to the gamma minus 1 over gamma, all minus 1, all times 2 over gamma minus 1. Putting in all of the values for the problem, PC over PE is simply 10, right? a million over 100,000, to the power of gamma minus 1 over gamma, that's 0.3 divided by 1.3 minus 1. So I'll just put some of the numbers in here. This term will be 0 0.70125. And then uh, 2 divided by gamma minus 1 is 2 divided by 0.3, which is 6.67. And if I multiply that, those numbers together, and take the square root, I get that the exit Mach number is 2.16. And that's what I want, I mean. So now let's go to part two of the question, compute the nozzle exit velocity. This is pretty straightforward to do. There's an equation for this directly that I've given, given you. So UE is just ME times the square root of gamma RTC, all times one over one plus gamma minus one over two, ME squared. We know everything here now, right? We know ME, we know R, we know gamma, we know TC. So this is just a plug and play. And if we do this, times the square root of 1.3 times 500 times 2,000 times 1 divided by 1 plus uh, 3 divided by 2 times 2.1. 6 to 5 squared. We get UE is 1,890 meters a second. Or a better way of writing it would be 1.89 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. The third part of the problem is to determine the mass flow rate through the nozzle. This is also straightforward because we know the flow is choked. How do we know the, cho is, the flow is choked? Well, PC over PE is greater than the value that would be needed to choke the flow uh, with a gamma of 1.3, right? So that's basically, it's greater than 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times Mach 1 squared to the power of gamma over gamma minus 1. This number works out to be 1 plus 0.3 divided by 2 to the power of 1.3 divided by 0 0.3, 1.832. So any value of PC over P larger than this uh, is going to mean that the flow is choked at the nozzle, and, this, and, that, and that means that the Mach number is 1 at the throat. Um, so since this ratio is, in fact, 10 in our case, uh, we're all set to know that it's choked. And in that case, the mass flow rate uh, can be evaluated by figuring out what's going on at the throat, and that's just the square root of gamma over 2 over gamma plus 1 to the power of gamma plus 1 over 2 times gamma minus 1. Uh, times PC over the square root of RTC times A star. Again, this is things we know everything, so we can plug this in. Uh, the square root of 1.3 times 2 divided by 2.3 all to the power of 2.3 divided by uh, 0.6. So this whole leading term is 0 0.66726, 
That's this. And then we had A star was 0 0.5 meters squared. So let's just get PC over square root of RTC. So that's 1 million divided by the square root of 500 times 2,000. And that's exactly 1,000. So when we work all that out, the mass flow rate should be 333.7 kilograms a second, or sticking to three significant figures, 334 kilograms a second. The fourth part is to find what's the nozzle exit area, AE. Well, there's only going to be one air exit area that's going to accommodate our exit Mach number. So basically, A over A star is 1 over, and let's go 1 over AE. So this is, we use ME, 2 over gamma plus 1 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 ME squared, all to the power of gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma minus one. And so first let's evaluate this ratio. So ME is 2.16 times two divided by 2.3 times one plus 0.3 divided by two times 2.16 squared. And that's all to the power of 2.3 divided by 0.6. That's 2.0706. So since A star is 0.5, we get AE is 2.0706 times 0 0.5. So AE is 1.04 meters squared. And finally, uh, we want to find the, the rocket thrust and the specific impulse. So let's start with the thrust. This is an easy one because, in general, F is m dot ue plus ae pe minus p atm. But this is zero because it's given that the exit pressure is the atmospheric pressure. So this is just m dot times ue. All right, so we earlier had m dot was 334 and ue was 1890. So 334 times 1890 is 60 or 631 kilonewtons. That's the thrust, and taking G is 9.81 meters per second squared, as given. Uh, then we find the specific impulse, which is F over M dot G, which in our case is just UE over G. So this is just 1890 divided by 9.81, which is 193 seconds. And that's all there is to it.